Let's cross to Nomvuya first uh, at uh, Standard Bank, and we'll kick, it, kick off there with the RAND Nomvuya. I was saying earlier that it had been at 8.23, 8.22, 8.21 for much of last week, and now 8.28 this morning, and that seems to be holding steady there. What's behind that? Um, hi, good morning there. Yes, certainly it does seem that markets are trading with a bit of a risk off flavor this morning. I think in large part that's because uh, China's PMI was released over the week and continued to disappoint, still remaining below that 50 points threshold. And of course that has led to a resurgence in fears over global growth. So at the moment does, certainly does seem to be at a, a risk off flavor um, permeating the markets. And that of course is reflected in what you're seeing in the weaker value of the RAND this morning. Mm -hmm. Well, let's come now to the studio where Jacina Solomons is with us. Hi, Jacina. Hi. PMIs, uh, we've got global PMIs and local PMIs, so let's start with the global ones, a useful measure because it's a measure that is done basically on the same methodology in many countries. Yes, exactly. So now with all the global stimulus measures now priced into markets fully, a lot of investors have started to turn their attention now to the outlook for the global economy. And this being the new first day of the new month, particularly a very busy day, so you get all the f PMI numbers out today. We ha already had, like Vuyo mentioned, we already had the Chinese PMI numbers. So later today we look forward to the Eurozone PMI numbers, those numbers expected to remain below that 50 index level, which separates uh, the economy from contraction or expansion. So below 50, definitely, and, and just showing that the, the, that the recession across the, across the European region is just deepening further in, in the third quarter of this year. Yeah, of course, uh, Domboya, we've got the, the data th coming through today on the back of disappointing numbers that came through in Friday's session. I mean, a wider than expected trade deficit uh, figure coming through and that really uh, s subduing sentiment towards riskier assets overall. Um, yes, absolutely. I mean, the, the widening in the tri trade deficit, of course, the numbers are quite lumpy and erratic, so you have to be careful not to read too much into that one number. Um, but certainly, 12.2 billion was quite staggering. And of course, the prognosis for the following month's deficit isn't good, given the uh, troubles that we saw in the mining sector and likely to see you know, quite a sharp slump there in, in, mineral, expo in, in mineral exports mm -hmm. for that month. So the prognosis for the trade deficit, and of course, then for the current account deficit for the third quarter certainly is and great um, and of course sapping some support for the RAND from that pr uh, perspective yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. Jacina, all of this is uh, you know standing as precursor to our own PMI data yes. out today. I mean what are your expectations on that front? So our, our PMI is very closely related to the global PMI numbers. We've seen that global PMI number remaining below that 50 index level for the past three to four months. So expect the local PMI mm -hmm. to take direction from that number and simply to fall below the 50 index level um, for in, in September and then just highlighting once, like I said, taking direction from the global... global mm. Warwick, before we go on to new vehicle sales and the business confidence index later out in the week, uh, your sense of the manufacturing side of things? I mean, we're not short of data on this. Is there anything there for us to think about? Uh, I would say that, <coughs> excuse me, um, that some of the manufacturing data we, we, we've seen has been surprisingly good. I think part of that has been that capacity in South Africa has run at um, surprisingly tight levels. And I think that's, that's held up for some better numbers, <coughs> excuse me, than otherwise. Um, but um, I can't see a hell of a lot um, to drive it otherwise. Mm. Mm -hmm. Talking about uh, drivers, uh, let's look at vehicle sales data that uh, coming through tomorrow. Uh, mm -hmm. Just, you know, we were talking a little earlier about the resilience, uh, so to speak, yes. of the South African consumer. Mm -hmm. Expectations there? So simply muted growth in those vehicle sales numbers uh, for September then. Remaining in those single digit numbers, not the uh, big numbers that we saw uh, early in the year. So largely on the back of slow disposable income growth and slow credit numbers growth so should simply just feed into uh, muted vehicle sales for September. Mm -hmm. uh, we are looking at those vehicle sales, of course, uh, it's been a sector that has been very competitive uh, in terms of low interest rates. Prices have been capped for a long time. Uh, the RAND would also affect imports there. W what kind of equation are we looking at for vehicle sales for the rest of the year and into next year? Um, well, certainly I do concur with uh, Jacina's view that we have seen quite a sharp slowdown in vehicle sales. I mean, the last number was 9.4% year on year, but that was almost half the previous month's year annual growth rate of about 18%. So quite a sharp slowdown that we've seen in vehicle sales and not altogether surprising. It's one of the few 
demand side indicators that have held up relatively well this year despite all the assaults that we've seen on consumer income growth and consumer spending. Um, so we, were, we had expected to see this momentum slowing um, at some point and it does begin, appear that that process has already begun. So casting forward to, towards the rest of the year certainly we'd expect to see vehicle sales continue to moderate. I mean we've seen some sizable petrol price increases at the moment. We see uh, consumer confidence under pressure. Consumer incomes haven't been rising as steadily as they have for the last couple of quarters. Um, so certainly there does seem to be some lack of support that's going to be evident for the consumer um, vehicle market and, and we'd expect to see that reflected in the numbers going forward. Um, as far as the RAND is concerned, you, you're absolutely right that there is obviously a strong import component and as, we, as the RAND continues to weaken, of course that would be likely to filter into higher vehicle prices as well, although that's possibly only likely to come through into the next year. So all in all, it does seem that you know, the vehicle market having held up relatively well is starting to look a little bit shaky. Yeah. yeah. How do you factor all of this uh, wor uh, work into your investment decisions right now? Because we've got a whole lot of economic data coming through on the local front, but, uh, you know, stealing the headlines on a daily basis is all that we see uh, come through globally. Well, uh, it goes back perhaps earlier to my comment about how stratified mm -hmm. Um, the layers are amongst the South African consumer. I mean, we can even take the likes of a lawnman as a microcosm. Okay, what's going to happen is you've probably got a rock driller now who can afford a new car, mm. but down the road his mate who just been uh, retrenched from K4 shaft is uh, lucky if he can afford a can of Coca-Cola. Mm. So you can see how this kind of effect stratifies society. And the and same the would apply by extension to famous brands and uh, other consumer Very companies. Very much so. Do you see now all of this in a, in a way it, it works quite nicely. It comes down to consumer uh, business confidence. Uh, the business confidence index is out later this week. The way we've been talking, business confidence can't be very good. What are you expecting there? Yeah, nothing that will shoot the lights out from the business confidence. Or number. shoot the lights down. <laughs> <laughs> so, so a very, very muted number expected. We don't really forecast that number, but a very muted number if we take direction from the BR consumer um, business confidence that was released earlier. There was a slight uptick in, in that number. So, so no big changes. Like I say, nothing. Um, extraordinary we expect from, from uh, business how confidence. How are you factoring in all the industrial action that we're seeing in the mining sector, in the uh, freight industry as well, and the kind of impact that's set to have on the South African economy GDP numbers mm -hmm. moving forward? So our house views for GDP numbers for, for 2012 to come in at 2.2 percent. So uh, uh, we, we saw that, that big jump in, in in the second quarter of this year. However, if we take out um, mining from, if we exclude mining from the second quarter GDP, the local economy only expanded by around 1.8%. So simply going forward, then mining continues to weigh, should we expect the mining sector to, con to contract in the third quarter of this year, which should weigh then on, 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 on GDP for this year and in line with our view for growth to come in at 2.2% for, at for this year. Namvuya, last word from you on, on business confidence and how it reflects all these other things. I'm, uh, in a way, one is surprised by the way people are talking that it's not lower. Yes, absolutely. Certainly, I would concur with Jacina's view again that there's nothing likely to shoot the lights out as far as business confidence is concerned. Um, we have seen a gradual decline in business confidence, and it's, of course, not altogether surprising. We have a slowing economy, uh, and ahead of Mangawong in December, we have quite a bit of policy uncertainty. We know that pol we know that corporates are nervous. We know that they're sitting on near rec record amounts of cash, and I don't see any prospect for a turnaround in this situation, certainly in the short term. 2013, however, could see a bit of an uptick as as far as growth is concerned and as far as confidence is concerned. Um, but in the short term, certainly we don't expect business confidence to, um, you know, to, to reflect a certain exuberance on behalf of corporates.